Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and it looks like our return to the moon officially begins. Well, I guess to some extent. On May 31st of 2022, a new satellite is going to be launched in the orbit of the moon in order to test something really important about the capabilities of the future platform known as the Lunar Gateway, which is going to serve as our official gateway for a more permanent future station somewhere on the surface of the moon. So let's discuss all of this in a little bit more detail, but I guess let's start with a simple realization that all of this is going to start in 2024, only two years from when I'm making this video, and if you're watching this in 2024, it probably has already started. And I bet it's pretty cool. Hopefully everything went okay. With this beautiful space station, Lunar Gateway space station, being the eventual goal that's hopefully going to be finished sometime in 2027. And though several scientists and several science communicators have in the past, I guess to some extent criticized this, saying that it might not really be that useful to us and it might be a little bit better to just directly land on the moon without the use of an actual station, I wanted to give you a little bit more details about this project and basically underline why it is kind of cool and possibly quite useful. Now first of all, in terms of the actual size, the gateway is going to be relatively small, way way smaller than the International Space Station, comparable in size to the Chinese Space Agency space station known as Tianwen-1. And also unlike the ISS that has served as a permanent home to humanity for several decades now, in this case the gateway is literally going to be just that, it's going to be a kind of a temporary gateway. Humans are not going to be permanently residing here and it's mostly going to be autonomous serving as a kind of a communication hub, short-term habitation module, and a holding area for different rovers, with some potentially being eventually used on the surface of the moon. But it's also going to be serving as a very important step in our return to the moon, part of the so-called Artemis mission. And without this particular gateway, it would be very difficult to land and to return from the moon or to deliver large payloads to the moon, with the gateway itself serving several purposes. First of all, it's a major collaboration, once again, just like the International Space Station, in this case involving ESA, Japanese Space Agency and the Canadian Space Agency, once again, and most likely also bringing other members with time. For example, I know that Korean Space Agency is also very interested in joining this. In other words, it presents an opportunity for other organizations, except for NASA, to finally visit the moon. On top of this, it's going to be serving as a kind of a stepping stone for future crewed missions to Mars mostly in testing new technologies and in testing the ability of certain space stations to stay in certain orbits. But the most important reason why the Lunar Gateway is the only way for us to currently return to the Moon is because of the way that NASA designed their Orion spacecraft. The spacecraft is going to be delivering humans to the Moon once again. The current mission profile for the Orion spacecraft only gives it enough fuel to reach certain parts of orbit of the Moon. It's not actually going to have enough fuel to land on the Moon, or more importantly, to return from it. And that's because the Saturn rocket no longer exists, and the current space launch system, also known as SLS, provides just enough power to launch the Orion craft and its modules, but nothing else. No lunar landers, no return craft. Which once again reminds us how absolutely incredible the Saturn rocket was, and how powerful this mission profile was as well. This is not something we can recreate very easily. And that's mostly because the parts from this rocket are no longer available to us, it's actually impossible to recreate them, and trying to recreate them using modern technology would be prohibitively expensive. But also because NASA has been planning this mission for so long, and so this image kind of shows you the average mission profile. The Orion craft is going to dock with the station, the astronauts are going to reside on a station for a few days, and they're then going to use a separate lander that's going to be reusable to land on the surface of the moon. But we're actually going to discuss this mission in even more detail in some of the future videos, especially when NASA comes closer to the launch of that first part of the actual gateway. For now, let's actually talk about some of the unusual things about this platform and why the scientists decided to do things that way. First of all, we know that the station is going to have a very unusual and somewhat interesting orbit. It's known as NRHO, Near Rectilinear Halo Orbit. Yeah, try saying that when you're tired. Anyway, so it kind of looks like this. It's basically a polar orbit around the moon, with the gateway moving in this way, with the Earth right there for comparison. So at some point it's going to approach the moon really closely, this is approximately 3000 kilometers or 1900 miles away from the lunar north pole, which is also the part where it's going to be moving the fastest, and then it's going to move farther away, with the farthest point being approximately 70,000 kilometers or 43,000 miles above the lunar south pole. And this is a super intriguing orbit, why is it actually going to be doing that? Well, at this point, the station is going to be moving really slow, and also at this point, for any craft coming from planet Earth, 
the amount of fuel needed to reach this orbit and to then reconnect to the gateway is going to be very very low. In the more technical terms, the delta V here is only 180 meters per second to reach this point and 240 meters per second to perform an insertion burn and to dock with the gateway. So in terms of fuel efficiency, this is as efficient as it gets. And so by docking with a station that's in this orbit, it then becomes possible to reach the surface of the moon with very little fuel use. And because of the very elliptical orbit here, it then takes the astronauts closer to the moon where they can use the other craft to descend and to perform their mission. And this orbit is also a kind of a sweet spot where the pull of gravity from planet Earth and the pull of gravity from the moon create a somewhat unusual stable orbit where, at least in theory, a craft can stay quite indefinitely without losing its orbit for a very long time. And even preliminary calculations suggest that you only need a very little amount of fuel to maintain this orbit for several years. And that's, I guess, the more intriguing part. The moon has a lot of different stuff on the surface, and it has a lot of irregularities, gravitational irregularities, that normally cause different orbiting crafts to slowly lose their altitude and to eventually crash into the surface of the moon. Generally speaking, um, it's very difficult to stay in orbit around the moon for more than several decades. And that's really because of the unusual irregularities inside the moon that cause a lot of gravitational anomalies. Now because of this, finding an, a more permanent orbit has always been the goal. So discovering this orbit was a bit of a eureka moment, but even this is not super stable. And that's why this station is going to be using ion engines for its orbital maintenance. Which by the way is already super super cool. And the ion engines for the station are going to be made by a company known as BUSEC. The company that's responsible for producing some of the most advanced ion engines and that's most likely going to take this to a completely next level after this mission. And this is a really exciting way to create propulsion for the station simply because it's so efficient and because even though it doesn't provide a lot of acceleration, it can in theory function for a very long time using very very little fuel. In this case, only approximately 10 meters per second of delta V is required every year. And in theory, it even becomes possible to shift the station to different orbits around the moon by expanding just a little bit more fuel. Now, I don't think it's going to be possible to move it to a different planet such as Mars, but it is going to serve as a very important learning platform for some of the future missions involving Martian stations as well. But there's also another important reason for this orbit. As you can see, it's always sort of facing planet Earth, which means that there's never going to be any blackout in terms of communication. Which of course has been a huge stressor and a huge problem for some of the early Apollo missions. By being on the opposite side of the moon, it's usually impossible for anyone to communicate with the astronauts. Also, even though we're calling this a lunar gateway, one of the mission profiles is to actually serve as a gateway to some of the future Martian missions as well, which is once again possible because of this unusual orbit. By launching a mission to Mars right from this region, it becomes possible to save a huge amount of fuel and creates an important opportunity for a crewed mission to Mars, which would be pretty impossible otherwise. Unless, of course, we use some of the more dangerous rockets or some of the more dangerous profiles. In other words, this right here is once again a kind of a stepping stone for some of the future exploration of Mars and, of course, a potential colony both on the Moon and on Mars. But here's the thing, though. This is still an extremely new discovery and extremely new orbit. It's currently untested. And so because of this, we get this launch that's going to be happening on May 31st of 2022. Part of the project known as Capstone, which stands for Cislunar Autonomous Positioning System Technology, Operations and Navigation Experiment. And in a nutshell, it's a 9 months long mission using a CubeSat that's going to assume the orbit around the Moon, and specifically that orbit I just showed you, and it's going to be testing both the stability of this orbit, or basically if everything works as expected, while also testing several other systems that are going to be really important for the Lunar Gateway. And here this mission is going to spend at least 6 months in orbit around the Moon, but it's only going to be firing its thrusters occasionally to maintain its orbit, just to see if everything works as NASA calculated. Which of course is really important because the Lunar Gateway is going to be spending at least 15 years in this particular position. And so if the scientists do discover some kind of a gravitational anomaly they didn't predict, it might actually cancel a lot of the Martian missions and possibly even turn a lot of lunar missions quite unattainable. And because NASA intends to send the first crewed missions to Mars in early 2030s, all of this kind of depends on this particular experiment. But in terms of the economics of this mission, it's kind of interesting how all of this was achieved. It's part of NASA's small business innovation research. It's essentially where they give money to various startups to try to create incredible technology. With this being a very good representation. We are pioneers and so are you. 
with this satellite being made by a small startup from Colorado known as Advanced Space and launched on top of the rocket using another startup, Rocket Lab. Which kind of highlights why NASA has become so extremely successful in the last decade or so. They've been able to leverage so many different startups and create so many different opportunities for small businesses to basically join in and to create something incredible together, which makes NASA an incredible enterprise. An enterprise that bases everything on collaboration, not really competition. Which is also why I believe the Lunar Gateway is a very important stepping stone for the future of humanity in space. Without this mission, and by just using different profiles to land on the moon, it's going to become quite impossible to create important opportunities for other countries to join in and to collaborate on something big. But I guess more importantly, the Artemis mission also starts this year as well. As a matter of fact, Artemis 1 is supposed to start later this year. This is going to be an uncrewed test of SLS and the Orion spacecraft. Currently it's planned for August of 2022, but that's of course assuming there are no delays. And then at some point in 2025, NASA is hoping to finally land astronauts somewhere near the lunar south pole. This is going to be part of the Artemis 3 mission, with Artemis 2 in between these missions being the test of the craft in terms of the performance when it comes to the actual crew on board with the craft basically orbiting the moon and returning back to Earth. But I guess the exciting part is that all of this is within only a few years from when I'm making this video. And that also means that we're going to be talking about a lot of this in the upcoming videos as well. And that also means that if you enjoy these videos, make sure to subscribe because we'll come back and talk about this for many many years to come as the mission progresses. On that note, thank you for watching, check out all of the relevant links in the description below, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.